I'm Tom Hunt, Projects Officer at RECORD, the Local Environmental Record Centre for the Cheshire region, covering Cheshire, Holton, Warrington and Wirral. I'm at Warrington Museum at the moment, looking at the fossilised remains of Chirotherium and Rhynchosaurus, creatures that were around during the Triassic, the time period when most of the bedrock in Holton was laid down. To help us learn more about this, Cynthia Burek of the University of Chester is talking to Jeff Clark of Holton Borough Council at Holton Castle in Runcorn. So Cynthia, tell us exactly what type of rocks were formed here in Holton? Well, it's a really good exposure of uh, Triassic red sandstone. Um, Triassic period, around about 250 million years ago. That's an awful long time ago to most of us. So, uh, yes, so they're sedimentary rocks, sandstones, bright red, coloured by iron, Triassic in age. So, how and when were they actually formed? Sandstones are made from individual little tiny sand grains, just like we find on the beach today. And each of those sand grains is, is the mineral quartz, which is SiO2, to be chemically accurate. And nature glues them together using different glues, um, different chemical compounds like iron oxide, like um, silica, like carbonates um, and therefore they're no longer the loose sediments such as we find on, on, on the beach but they are hard rocks. So Cynthia what were these conditions like when the rocks were actually formed? Okay well when these sandstones were formed back in the Triassic England and Wales lay over the tropics, uh, so it was very, very much hotter. It was arid conditions, a bit like uh, a desert environment now, like the Sahara or the southwest of the United States. So co environmental conditions were hard. It was dry. There was water around, and we know that because some of the sandstones contained little pebbles which were moved by water. And we also have some life forms around. Even today in deserts we, we, we find um, biodiversity, biological forms. So back in the Triassic we had the precursors, if you like, of, of the dinosaurs. Now everybody's heard of the dinosaurs since the, the film by Steven Spielberg called Jurassic Park all those years ago. So Jurassic, Triassic was the period immediately before the Jurassic. So we had the, 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 the ancestral dinosaurs, if you like, and we, we don't find their bones in the sandstones, but what we do find is their footprints, tracks of where they walked, which is incredible to think that they've lasted 250 million years. And if you want to see some really good examples, there's some in Warrington Museum, or you could go to Chester and there's some in the, in the Grosvenor Museum in Chester. And I believe we've actually had uh, evidence of that on some of the sites in Runcorn. Yes, you have, yes. Several years ago now they've been found by, by quarrymen, but uh, we have examples, yes. Uh, uh, and the actual name of the pre-ancestral dinosaur is Chirotherium. That's a good, strong Latin name. <laughs> <laughs> So Cynthia, what are the main processes that create geodiversity? Okay, well the main processes that create or, or form geodiversity are the natural processes that we see everywhere. Um, weathering by wind, rain, ice, all, all the natural processes give us geodiversity and we've got to remember that geodiversity is not just rocks and fossils, it's also the landscape, the soils, so it's all and the natural processes that, that, that are associated with those. So that's geodiversity and because it takes hundreds of thousands of millions of years to form mountains and river valleys and cliff sections and indeed rocks, we have to look after them, we have to conserve them and this is a new area that's emerging called geoconservation. It's looking after sites like Holton for generations to come. So Cynthia, can you tell us in which way that geodiversity actually affects biodiversity? 
I have a little saying that I tell all my students and I tell anybody that will listen and that's geodiversity underpins biodiversity. Without the diversity of geological features, of the acidity of the soil, of the different heights, the altitude, we wouldn't have the biodiversity that we have. And we have only to look at this section here and we can see a red soil developed immediately above the red sandstone. And there is a direct relationship there. We've got grass growing on top of the soil. We've got lichen growing on the rocks. And this shows the relationship between geodiversity and biodiversity. We need to look after both of them, but always geodiversity underpins biodiversity. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Thanks there to Jeff and Cynthia for giving us an insight into the links between the geodiversity and biodiversity. Before we left, Cynthia had a more detailed look at some of the geological features that can be found in Holton. We've got a lovely example here of honeycomb weathering, where we have much coarser sand, well cemented together, holding up much better against the weather. So we have, if you like, little craters surrounded by um, uplifted sandstone. Here we've got some nice example of man-made tool marks, which could be confused with the natural honeycomb weathering. These are the marks left by the quarry men when they opened up the quarry. Most sandstone beds are laid down horizontally, but here we've got an example of cross bedding where the beds have been laid down at an angle. You can see um, in the direction of my finger and above we have them laid down at a slightly different angle. This is the direction of flow of the, the, the transporting agent that was laying down the sand grains. Now this could be either wind or water but whatever happens, it's in the direction of flow. So these ones were flowing in that direction and these ones were flowing in this direction. We've got a very nice example here of an exposed bedding plane. We don't often see these exposed, but if we look at the cliff section here, we can see the bedding planes um, clearly, clearly exposed along these lines. Record is responsible for gathering as much natural history information for the Cheshire region as possible and using this information for conservation purposes. We currently have about 1.5 million wildlife records on the database and this number is growing every day. For more information please visit the website at www.record-lrc.co.uk Bringing Geology to Life in Holton is the first project where Record have looked to use our wildlife records and our biodiversity expertise in conjunction with local geological knowledge in an attempt to make the links between the two.